it's great to see you and I'm happy you are here. Today, we're telling the story of Aaron Ralston. This guy was trapped under a rock. He cut off his arm so that he can climb a mountain, ran five miles and then be saved. And he survived. But before we get to that, I am inspired by people's will to survive. So if you want to be inspired, encouraged, or you just want a cool story, stick around. And you know what to do? So Aaron Ralston was born in 1975 and his family moved to Denver, Colorado when he was 12. In Denver, he attended Cherry Creek High School and he always liked the outdoors. And this is also where he learned to backpack and ski. I've been there myself in mountains are incredible so if you ever get the chance go there it's it is incredible he was also a person that liked to keep to himself thus he really liked being outdoors because that would gave him the opportunity to be by himself to explore to ski to do what he wanted to do where he later graduated from carnegie mellon university with two degrees one in french and one as a mechanical engineer in 2002 Aaron Ralston left his job at intel as a mechanical engineer he moved to aspen because he wanted to explore the Rockies more. In fact, he had an ambition to climb all of the 58 14,000 footers that are in Colorado. Colorado has 58 mountains that are higher than 14,000 foot or 4,200 meters. Only a handful of people have ever climbed them and he wanted to become one of them. Now there's a great story later in the video about this, so stay tuned for that. So on the 25th of April 2003, Aaron went to a trail that he knew very well. The trail was about five hours drive away in the Blue John Canyon in the Canyonlands National Park. Now the Blue John Canyon is situated on the western section of the park within the Robbers Roost region, known for its rugged and remote landscape. The canyon is formed by the erosion of sandstone layers over millions of years, resulting in a narrow and deep ravines with steep walls. The canyon itself was about 6 miles or 9.7 kilometers long and it has varying depths all over the place. Some sections exceed 1,000 feet or 300 meters deep. Blue John Canyon is renowned amongst experienced canyoneers for its technical challenges, including narrow slot obstacles requiring technical rope skills. So this was the perfect place for a guy like Aaron Ralston. After about five hours of driving from Aspen, he arrived at Blue John Canyon at the Canyonlands National Park. This was in Utah. He was at least two and a half hours away from any nearest town in any direction. He was carrying his 25 pound 11 kilogram backpack on his bike and he set off. He finished about 15 miles, 24 kilometers worth of biking when he arrived at Blue Jean Canyon. Here he stopped, chained his bike to a tree and he got down into one of the ravines starting the hike inside the Blue Jean Canyon. So he was enjoying his time, he was in a place as pretty as this and then about an hour into his hike he had to go up and climb over a few rocks, climbing up over the first one, making his way up, checking that everything's okay, got up onto a rock and as he was on this rock the rock came loose and sort of he tried to get out of the way and the rock fell onto his left hand first and then blocked his right hand against the wall. But now he was sitting there with his hand and the pain was ridiculous. He says it's like a thousand times worse than hitting your finger in a door, which we've all done and I can believe that must have been painful. So he proceeded to shout and scream and swear and curse this rock and what happened for about 40, 45 minutes just shouting and screaming and just swearing at this thing and just being angry and ripping his arm trying to get out, just getting, trying to see what's going on. I mean, he's frantic. He's here, this thing fell on him and he didn't know what to do. So after the shouting and screaming, he managed to sort of calm down. And you'll see throughout the story, there are a few places where he focused on keeping his mind calm. And I think this is what saved him. So in this particular instance, he focused on calming down and seeing what's actually going on. He tried pushing the rock off with his feet, but now he must realize he is halfway up. He's not on the ground, he's somewhere in the air, somewhere hanging in a ravine, which is also just a tight space. So it's not like this can't really do much. So he tried to push it off with his legs and then he realized that that's not going to work. And then he tried to stand and he realized, but wow, it's even difficult to stand and there's no real place for him to sit as well. So he realized he was in a rough situation. His rock fell onto his arm, his arm was going numb and he was stuck. 
halfway in a ravine and nobody knew where he was and nobody could hear him scream so this was a tough situation now also do keep in mind that this is 2003 these times were the times of the nokia 1100 and the 3310 and i mean we're talking the start of the revolution in cell phones we didn't carry cell phones with us everywhere we didn't have smartphones with screens and gps's and things like that i mean I know, I think my first Garmin I bought was around this time. And, I mean, this was when Snake was a thing. It's back in the day. So he didn't have a cell phone with him. He didn't have radios with him, but he also made the mistake of not telling anybody where he was going. So he knew if his water ran out and his food runs out, things are going to get worse. Because he knew that it's going to take a while for them to realize that he's missing and then for him for them to report him missing. And then where are they going to start looking? Because he's five hours away from his house and two and a half hours away from the closest civilization. So then he decided, okay, let me let him see. Let him take stock what's going on in his backpack. So in some way, with his arm here under the rock, he managed to get the backpack off and he started unpacking things. I mean, yeah, this must have been ridiculous. His arm is in pain. He can't really stand... He doesn't know what's going on. He can't get this, this rock off of his arm. So, and then now he's unpacking, seeing what is in there. He found a gallon of water, some climbing gear, a small first aid kit, a multi-purpose tool, two burritos, which is nice, but it's not that much food, a video camera, digital camera, and his LED headlamp. So now knowing what he's got in his backpack, he knew he had to make all of this last because it would take at least two days for them to start looking for him. And then after that, he doesn't know how long a search like this could last. He knew he had to make this last as long as possible. He already finished an entire liter of water almost right after he got his arm stuck, just grabbed his bottle and he just chugged it just out of frustration and all of that so then he realized wow that might have been a mistake we'll give the guy a chance trying to get himself to calm down so he immediately grabbed the multi-purpose shoe opened up the blade in some way because again the blade is like this his arm is over here and he had to get the blade out he got the blade out and he decided he's gonna start chipping away at this rock because he can't move it it's too heavy so i mean that might help so he started chipping 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 and it didn't work blade didn't make much damage to this rock he was chipping and chipping and chipping and the more he's chipping the more the blade blade went blunt but he decided well there's nothing else that he can think of at the moment so let him carry on chipping he was looking around trying to see what possibilities he had now he's been he's been there for a few hours already and remember he can't stand properly because he's up somewhere in the air and he also can't really sit because he, and he can't also lean against something so he's standing in an awkward position hanging sort of on his hand and it's really starting to get painful and he starts to realize that his arm is just going number and number and he, well at this point he already can't really feel anything in his arm now with his arm in this situation he thought well why don't i just cut my arm off i mean <laughs> i mean let's just do that and he's just shrugged it off as a joke and he decided okay let's carry on chipping 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 but now it started getting dark and remember he was only wearing active wear because his plan was to cycle and then after cycling do some hiking and then after the hiking, getting back to the car where he left the rest of his clothes. He wasn't prepared at all for staying in the mountain for the night. The temperature was dropping to about 30 degrees Fahrenheit or minus 1 degree Celsius, which is really cold when you're standing outside. And he decided, well, he has to keep himself going. So he just carried on chipping at the rock. But the biggest problem at this point was standing in this awkward position. I mean, that must have been killing you because like I said, like we said before, he can't stand, he can't support himself. And he decided, let him just try and make a plan with that or try and sort out some way of sitting down before it gets too dark. And as he looked up, he saw there was a bit of a crack in one of the rocks at the, above him. And he managed to, in some way, get a carabiner tied on to the front of a rope. And he threw it in there and it managed to hook. On this, he managed to get his climbing harness uh, onto the rope and hanging onto this carabiner. And that worked for a while until his legs started going numb. So he didn't want to have the numb arm, numb legs and just being in a very weird situation. So what he did is he actually stood up 
trying to support himself as he was to make the blood circulate through his legs and then sitting down again so standing and sitting in intervals trying to not pass out or fall asleep while he's in this awkward position because he doesn't know what's going to happen and that's the way he survived his first night being away in the rock hanging sitting standing hanging sitting standing dawn broke and he thought this is another day and again like i say he managed to keep his mind straight he managed to stay calm and he decided let's look for another way and let's see what else we can do on this morning he was very hungry obviously he started realizing he's running out of water and he decided well let me collect my urine in the bottles that are empty so that later on if i run out of water he'll have something to drink now that's brave and thus he did that he started looking around spent the whole morning chipping away at the rock as he did throughout the night at least he warmed up a bit now and on this day he had many emotions he started seeing his family he started thinking about things that happened and things that was going on and i mean you can think for yourself what will go through your mind if you are in a situation like this so later that afternoon he actually thought he heard voices walking which is very possible because there were people every now and then there weren't a lot of people but there were people and he thought he heard voices so he started shouting and screaming but now you remember if you are down in one of these ravines and somebody is at the top the chances of them hearing you is very small so they didn't hear it and it became night again the sun set and the temperature dipped and he was still chipping away at the rock still standing sitting trying to move trying to keep himself in a good state of mind and just focusing on surviving so the next morning the sunrise at last he got a bit of heat again the night was over and he survived and he was as he was sitting and standing and doing his thing he he thought of a plan maybe he must use the carabiner that he put into the rock at the top to build a pulley system to maybe lift up the rock from where it is so obviously with your arm here you can only do so much but he managed to do it he had a whole pulley system going with the uh, the rope that he had his climbing rope and some of the other carabiners and he built a system and he tried to pull this off but i mean but now yes this also created some problems because now he's swinging on the arm that's d basically dead already at this point and i mean that's just causing more pain and he's pulling as hard as he can but he's not heavy enough or strong enough to get the rock to move away or get the rock off of his arm and so it, as the more he tried and the more he tried this took him most of that day into the afternoon until he started realizing that maybe the joke that he made about his arm might be the only solution because they're not going to find him his water is running out he's already now starting to drink some of his own urine and he didn't eat for a day already there's no chance of anybody coming so what now and it became night again it got cold again he was still hanging by his arm sitting standing sitting standing but he survived another night so on the next morning he was really i mean you know the drill he was there and he got hold of his video camera and he started making videos for everybody my name's Aaron ralston my parents are down on larry ralston of englewood colorado Whoever finds this, please make an attempt to get it to them. Be sure of it. I would appreciate it. He made a video of his last will and testament. He said what he wanted to do, and he also carved his name on the rocks behind him. His name, the 3rd of April 2003. He realized this is it. It's finished now. Climbing would probably be impossible with one hand. The blood loss and my dehydration, I think. Um, I think I would die if I cut my arm. Now remember, in the first night and the next day, he was carving that stone. He was trying to get that stone carved off. So that completely messed up the blade. So as he was hanging... Jesus. I tried. I tried cutting my arm off. I couldn't even barely break the skin with this, this stupid knife. I tried a couple different blades and all I did was just mark myself up. I, I, and then he realized but what about the bone how am i going to get through the bone and yes that was that brought him again 
get to the end of another day. Now on the fifth night, things started to go bad. He had sores on his face, sores on his lips because of the urine that he was drinking. He was getting dehydrated because obviously he wasn't drinking as much as he was supposed to. He was hungry, he was tired and I remember and he was standing and sitting and leaning and it, it was just a very very uncomfortable place to be. And this is the way understanding that he had a choice between will he give up or is he going to carry on. And remember, all throughout this, he was fighting his mind. He was keeping his mind sane, as sane as possible. But at this point, he was broken almost, if I can say it like that. But as he was falling in and out of conscious, he had a vision. He had a vision of him playing with this small child. And he saw in the vision that he didn't have a right arm. And he saw in the vision that he was happy. And, he had he, and that he had a great life. And he, and he had a good time playing with the child. And he thought, but... But what is going on? And then he woke up the next morning. And he decided, I'm going to remove my arm. I'm going to do what it takes. I'm getting out of here. This epiphany that I could break, that I could break the bones because my arm was caught so tightly that I could torque myself. He would have to snap both of the bones in his arm to make it work. Now it was only the bone. And as he checked, he saw, but wait, 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 wait. My bone, my arm is in such a way that I can, I can wedge it against the, or leverage it against the rock and the rock will actually help him break the bones. And he did that. And as he wedged it off, 45 minutes after he gave the first stab into his flesh, he finally removed his arm and he- And I wasn't even attached anymore. And I fell down like this and I, 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 I was free, I was free. His arm's bleeding, he's loose. He can move actually, but he's, Heavily dehydrated, hungry, tired, very injured, sores all over his body. And I mean, he's nowhere close to the hospital. So yes, luckily he got his arm off, but that's bleeding and he's, he's ready to go. But, but where does he go? And this guy managed to climb the ravine out all the way up and onto the normal ground level all the way at the top where then he started walking and walking and running and walking and running and walking remember his truck was eight miles away that's about 14 and a half kilometers away from where he was at that current time so he was just going for the truck that's all that he could think of and just going and going and four hours after he cut his arm off he was found by other hikers who then made contact with emergency services to help to keep him alive gave him some water gave him some food and six hours after he cut off his arm, emergency services arrived on the scene by helicopter where they lifted him off, took him to the closest hospital and then luckily at last they could treat him for all of his injuries. So wow, he was, he survived. He went on to have the child. He became one of a handful of people who summited all 58, the 14,000 footers. But wait, in winter, they also went back to lift it, the, the boulder that fell on his arm and they found that it was 800 pounds or a 360 kilogram piece of rock. There was no chance for him to remove that rock from his arm. He wasn't strong enough, didn't have the tools. They made a movie about this, it's just called 127 Hours. Aaron Ralston became, he carried on with his engineering career, but he also became a motivational speaker. He's been around the world. I've personally been to one of his talks in Johannesburg in South Africa. He's a highly motivational individual. And this is a perfect example of what you can achieve if you control your mind. So thank you for watching all the way to the end of this video. I really, really appreciate your time. I hope to see you in the next one and subscribe if you like the story. Until then, goodbye.